الحديث الخامس عشر The 15th hadith عن أبي قتادة الحارث بن الربعي الأنصاري رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يبسن أحدكم ذكره بيمينه وهو يبول ولا يتنفس في الإناء This hadith is narrated and collected uh, by um, Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim, both of them. Bukhari narrated this hadith in Kitab al-Wudu' Kitab al-Ashriba and Muslim narrated this hadith in uh, Kitab al-Tahara and the wording is the wording of Imam al-Muslim. The Sahabi that narrated this hadith, his name is Abu Qatada Al-Harith ibn al-Rab'i ibn al-Rab'i ibn Baldat Baldama Al-Salami Al-Ansari Faris Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was the hostman of the messenger. He participated in Uhud and Khandaq and every battle after that. He became very famous for his kunya. Bukhari and Muslim have narrated many of his narrations. Some of the Sahabas have narrated from him and a lot of the Tabi'een have narrated from him. He, Rahimahullah, he died between the years of 50 and 60 of the Hijrah. It's the time between that. Between 50 and 60 Hijri, one of those, those, within those 10 years, he died. No one really knows exactly. His virtues are very high. His virtue was a lot uh, and famous. Imam Muslim narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, كان خير فرساننا اليوم أبو قتادة The best of our horsemen today is Abu Qatada. So the Prophet praised him for his horseman work. The, this hadith explains the manners in doing your call of nature. Some of the manners in doing your call of nature. أبي قتادة الحارث ابن الربعي الأنصاري رضي الله تعالى عنه said that the messenger said لا يمسن one of you should not grab أحدكم one of you ذكره their private part ذكر is mainly used for the man's private part بيمينه with your right hand وهو يبول whilst you are urinating so it's حالة بولية وَلَا يَتَنَفَّسْ One of you should not blow into فِي الْإِنَاءِ into the vessel. You should not. The fiqh of the hadith. Prohibition in purifying yourself whilst touching your private part with your right hand. It is not permissible for a person to use their right hand when they are in the situation of purifying themselves from call of nature. So you can't you use your right hand as a support. Number two, the prohibition in this hadith is referring to specifically when you are urinating as for when you are not urinating, the hadith of the Prophet stands, which is, minka." It is a part of your body. Where he said to the companion, Talq ibn Ali, he said to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said to him, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, when he asked him about his private part, the Prophet said to him, it, it is nothing except a part of your body. But when you're urinating, you're not allowed to touch it. Imam al-Baghawi rahimahullah in his Sharh al-Sunnah he combined between the two hadiths which is what two hadiths? The prohibition the prohibition of um, touching your private part whilst touching your private part with your right hand with your right hand whilst you are cleaning it. The prohibition that came, that hadith, which is the one we're on right now. And also the other prohibition that came to not touch your private part with your right hand when you're not urinating. 
It's another narration as well. He said, Rahimahullah, if somebody says, how do you bring the two narrations from together? How do you bring those two narrations together? فَإِذَا أَرَاجَ الرَّجُلْ If a man wants to purify himself from a urine, how will he do it when he is not able to do it he is not able to do it with both of the situation. What is going to have to happen? Meaning a person, when he's doing his call of nature, huh, he's bound to touch his private part with his right hand. How is he? Because if he takes the stone with his left hand, then he's going to have to use his right hand with what? The private part. And if he touch, he grabs the stone with his right hand, and he touches his left hand, then he has cleaned himself with his what? Right hand. He said, as the correct way to bring that issue to clear is, the man grabs his private part with his left hand. And he wipes on a, a wall or something. Or, or a, yeah, or, so he uses, he doesn't have to grab the stone. He uses a wall or an uh, edge of a tree. Or he also does a stone that comes from the ground. A stone or something that comes from the ground. Or or a stone that's big. That doesn't move from its place. If this may cause him a harm, this he sits on the ground and he grabs the stone between his two legs uh, and then he takes his left leg so if he can't do it with an object out he takes the stone and he places it between his two, le two legs and what does he do? he takes his left hand and he still rubs it against that uh, uh, the stone that's Imamu uh, al baghawis view in regards to that issue. The fourth benefit that we take from the hadith is this is not specific for the man's own private part only. Also the woman. The woman is not allowed to touch her private part with her right hand when she is um, when she is urinating. She can't. She has to use her she has to use her left hand. So the woman is not also allowed as much as the man is not. Five, the prohibition of cleaning yourself with your right hand and touching it, your private part, is to show the honor of the right hand, or the right. And it's to honor it. Number six, the ulama have mentioned wisdom and hikam that are behind the prohibition of not using your right hand whilst urinating or touching your private part. They said, first of all, is to honor the right side and to respect it and to give it its rights and its position. They also said, um, because it is, if you did use your right hand, you remember it at the time you're eating. You've you used your right hand and so eating it would be a problem. And the person would, it would harm him to eat if he, if he used his right hand. Also that the person, the third is that the person carries the mushaf on his right hand so that he shouldn't. And it also shakes people's hand with the right hand. Also, the seventh thing that is in the hadith is to be very vigilant and aware of general purity and cleansiness. Number eight, the prohibition of blowing into a vessel and a cup or a object. If the person wants to breathe, the sunnah is that he breathes outside and not into the cup. And the ulama mentioned many reasons for why that um, the benefits of not blowing into the vessel. First of all, they said, "Anna abadu an taqdir al-ida." It's far from use 
no, uh, 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 poison or whatever disease that you don't put it, but it bring it to the people's cups or the cup itself. Also, it also protects you bring filth into the water or disease. Also, or fear that something may come out of your mouth and enter into the into the cup. Also, that it goes in, in accordance to the Prophet's guidance, alayhi salam, that he was like that. Um, also, that the people, if they see you breathing into a cup, that they would not drink it, nor would they eat it. It will bring other people to lose interest in wanting to drink or eat. The tenth benefit that we take from this hadith is sumu'u uh, shara How high the sharia is and its mercy and its wisdom that it ordered us every beneficial thing that we ever need and prohibited us from every harmful thing that could ever exist. This hadith has shown the two most greatest principles that um, doctors believe. The two biggest principles that stands on, on tib. Which is, sorry it's three, but these are the two from the three. Which is what? Hifdu siha to look after your health. And the second one is Al-Hamiyyatu min al to protect yourself from the harmful things. The scholars, they disagreed in this hadith. Whether this prohibition in this hadith, is it haram or is it disliked? Is it the prohibition? Is it lit karaha or is it lit tahrim? Why? Which is it? The jumhur of the ulama, the majority of the scholars hold that it is karaha, disliked. That is not haram. But what is known is the original essence of the prohibition is that it's haram. That the, the, the prohibition is always haram. That's the asal. Unless there's evidence that indicates that it's disliked. And we don't have no evidence here. So the view of the majority is not taken into consideration. The second point is, is the touching of the private part general or is it specific? Is it general, at that, is it particularly at the time of urine, or is it all the time? The scholars have discreet, disagreed. Some of the riwayat have come general. Are you with me? And some of the riwayat have come specific. And again, as we said before, hamlul mutlaq, giving presidency to the what? To the specific, takes precedence over the, the general. Whether it's in an order or prohibition, it doesn't matter. Whether it's an order or a prohibition, it does not matter. Allahu A'lam.